Guys, welcome to a classic film review of 1966's The Professionals. Now, 1966 was a pivotal year and period for the Western. Uh, this year, of course, would be the one that Sergio Leone capped off his Dollars trilogy with The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. Uh, but there was no doubt that the genre as a whole had seen its heyday. Uh, but there was some life left in it yet. And films like this show that audiences would still turn up to spend a couple of hours watching big stars go on daring rescue missions into hostile Mexico to rescue a damsel in distress. Uh, but there's a bit more to the professionals than that. So let's take a look. Fireworks start at 5.30 sharp. Any questions? A machine gun over the ladies' room. My job, anything else? Let's go to work. So some rich dude is understandably concerned that his young wife has been kidnapped by notorious Mexican bandit slash revolutionary uh, Raza and so he used his wealth and resources to hire a special team of tough guys all with unique skills to cross the border and snatch her back. So in this team we have Lee Marvin as the leader, uh, Woody Strode as the expert tracker, Robert Ryan as the expert horse wrangler and Burt Lancaster as the expert in explosives. What a team. And their skills are much needed because they're going up against Jack Palance as Raza and his gang of Mexican bandidos. Um, and the gang know how mean he is because some of them used to fight alongside him as revolutionaries. Uh, but this time, Raza's gone too far and allegedly kidnapped the mind-boggling Claudia Cardinal. Yes? Just wondering. What makes you worth $100,000? Go to hell. Yes, ma'am. I'm on my way. So The Professionals is that tried and tested of subgenres, uh, the Men on a Mission movie. Uh, the 1960s was the golden period for these, I think. Uh, obviously, we had The Magnificent Seven in 1960, maybe the example of this, uh, certainly in terms of Westerns. And we'd, of course, get The Guns of Navarone, uh, The Dirty Dozen, Where Eagles Dare, uh, many more. Um, why I feel The Professionals deserves mention among those cinematic heavyweights is that I feel it spends some quality time with its characters, certainly Marvin and Lancaster. Uh, Woody Strode is, unsurprisingly for the time, just kind of the token black guy with a, a primitive weapon, uh, which is a shame as he's probably the most talented and dangerous character of the gang. So yeah, we don't just get kind of bullet point skills as character traits for the most part. We get an actual history of these guys and how their backstory ties into the main villains uh, and ultimately how their true rebellious selves and their innate dislike of authority will lead them to question the morals of their mission, even if it jeopardises a $10,000 per man payday. And one of the things I love about the film is it's set a little later than many westerns. Uh, I'm not sure if a date is ever mentioned, maybe the late 1910s, as it's the last throes of the Mexican Revolution, which I think took place before 1920 anyway. And much like we do in The Wild Bunch, we see an early motor car here. Um, another little tease of a civilised society, uh, one which is left behind literally and metaphorically once we cross the unforgiving landscape into an almost lawless Mexico. And it's over the border where the gang are more at home with the exception of Robert Ryan's character who's clearly not used to the ever-changing conditions and whose ongoing gripes with the weather are almost the comic relief of the movie. If it isn't hot, it's cold. If it isn't cold, it's raining. How bad is that horse? Not too good. No bottom. We could all do with the rest. Shape would be a relief too. And the film also doubles up as a kind of heist movie, um, another favourite genre of mine, uh, with a mid-movie infiltration of Raz's lair to steal back slash re-kidnap the lovely Maria. Now here each of the guys get to show their skills and director Richard Brooks handles the action well and even has the cheek to throw in a runaway minecart escape. cool and as much of a boy's own adventure as this first half of the movie is it's what happens next really that sets the film apart you expect Raza and his minions to chase them back to the border and they do of course uh, but what would happen if the damsel in distress wasn't actually in distress and had no interest in being rescued and that's where Claudia Cardinal brilliantly upsets the apple cart continually trying to escape from the gang uh, the thought of being taken back to her older rich husband clearly not being an enticing prospect 
Now, Cardinal, who I first saw in 1968's Once Upon a Time in the West, which is the greatest Western ever made, by the way, but that's for another video, uh, was one of the sex symbols of the 50s, 60s and 70s. Uh, she's quite clearly astonishing, but she also spoke five languages um, and managed to work for some of the greatest European directors of all time, uh, with Fellini on Eight and a Half, uh, Visconti on The Leopard, Leone on the aforementioned Once Upon a Time, um, Herzog on Fitzcarraldo, uh, the list goes on. She's still working today and you may have spotted her on a recent Netflix show, Rogue City. But anyway, she brings a great shift in tone as she tries to run, ride and seduce her way out of capture. Uh, much of the dialogue here is between Marvin and Lancaster as they reminisce about the simplicity of the old days, a time that's leaving or has left them behind, uh, reducing them to just hired guns. We buried some fine friends there. Some fine enemies. That was one hell of a fine battle. Outnumbered, outgunned, and still we held that pass. Now, the film also scores points for humanising its main antagonist, uh, Jack Palance's Mexican bandit leader. Initially might seem like a cliche, but as the film's plot moves on, we find there's more to him and his relationship with Cardinal than it first seems. Also, his past with Lancaster in particular makes the inevitable confrontation between both sides a lot murkier than just the typical bad guy versus good guy of many other westerns. So writer, director and producer uh, Richard Brooks, who was Oscar nominated for writing and directing here, earns his pay not only dealing with uncomfortable simulated dust storms, but also with Lee Marvin's heavy drinking, uh, not helped by the fact that some of the film was shot just outside of Las Vegas uh, with the cast staying in local hotels. So Conrad Hall photographed the movie and we get spectacular scenery shot on location in Sonora, Mexico and Death Valley. Uh, when I think of the film, I think of these rocky outcrops and narrow canyons, um, ambushes and tight shootouts. Uh, the Professionals is one of those westerns that bridges the gap between the genre's heyday of kind of yeehaw wild west adventure and the cynicism and nastiness of films like The Wild Bunch, uh, Pat Garrett and the outlaw Josie Wales. You can, if you want, scratch a bit deeper to appreciate its attempts at fusing its action with real historical events, uh, the way it doesn't really present any good guys or bad guys, or you can simply sit back and enjoy it as a rescue mission with guns, bows and arrows, horses and explosions, and men swigging from little never-ending liquor bottles. Go check it out. What's the proposition? You won't lose your pants. Your life, maybe, but... Uh... What's that? Hardly anything at all. 